بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستقى الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <coughs> So brothers uh, we reached uh, this lesson last week we arrived to this chapter here uh, and uh, we stopped uh, the last lesson we stopped here uh, and this is uh, the actual beginning of the of the book which is called the three fundamental principles and as you can see here in arabic it says ya risalat al rabi'a so it's the fourth treatise or the fourth section and it mentions you can see the title here al usul al thalathah allati tajibu ma'rifataha uh, so then it mentions here the sheikh mentions the title of the actual book here and everything that we've gone through so far has been a build up to the actual book that we uh, which we're studying um and we're translating so we've arrived there and um so al usul al as you can see the the title there it means that the three fundamental principles that is obligatory for us to know so the sheikh is going to go through those uh, three principles that every muslim has to know and should know and is obligatory upon every male and female muslim to know so then the sheikh mentions he says al aslul awwal ma'rifatullahi azza wa jal so the three principles if we go through the or just trying to recap on the former part of the book it was knowing allah so having knowledge of allah having knowledge of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and having knowledge of the deen of islam and then the sheikh went through um several parts of a build up up to this lesson that we've reached today uh, so uh, he's going to expand on uh, what we've already covered so we'll go through what the sheikh has mentioned inshallah so the sheikh begins he says faida qila lak ma hiya al usul al thalath allati tajibu ma'rifatuha فقول معرفة العبد ربه ودينه ونبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. So then the Sheikh quotes the original part of the book and he says, if if you are asked, so if you were asked, what are the three fundamental principles that 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 are obligatory upon you to know? Then say a knowledge. was the knowledge of your lord or knowledge of the slave's lord in arabic here meaning that having knowledge of your lord your rab having knowledge of the deen of islam and having knowledge of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then the sheikh continues and he expands on it so this is the explanation now of 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 what we've mentioned so we'll continue inshallah as you can see number 1 starting from here so the sheikh says qawluhu al usul jam'u jam'u asl wal asl ma yubna alayhi ghayruhu wal far'u ma yubna ala ghayrihi fa hadhihi summiyat bil usul li annaha yubna alayha ghayruha min amr al din fa lidhalika summiyat usulan li annaha yubna alayha amr al din wa kullu al din yaduru ala hadhi al usul al thalathati so The Sheikh then he begins very basic is breaking down the words so just to help us understand uh, what the words actually mean as well to give us a, a primer to understanding uh, to understand what we'll go through so the Sheikh says and he speaks so he's, he's directly quoting the original text he mentions al usul he says al usul the word al usul means it is the singular or it is a plural of the word asal and as we know in urdu as well um Uh, al-asl is is the same word it means foundation so 
the word itself is found uh, foundation and as we all know this anyway um a foundation is something that other things are built upon it so it's the first thing so for example the foundations of a house we can all agree on that and understand it the simple example a foundation of a house is foundations are on the lower level and everything else is built upon it the walls etc and the rooms above it and etc and it stays uh, upright and then the sheikh mentions another word he says far so it's the opposite of foundation is uh, for example let's say let's use a different example a tree you have the tree trunk which is the foundation of the tree and you have the branches which are the secondary parts of the tree and so in the same manner that's what far means it's a secondary or subsidiary matters that uh, come off from the actual foundation of what we're discussing or whatever we're looking at or the examples that we've uh, struck it there as well so that's what the sheikh mentions really basic just to understand the words and then the sheikh mentions he says here that he says because the fund uh, he says he mentions the foundations of the deen and the reason why it was called foundations is because other things are built upon it as we mentioned and, and then he mentions the branches because that the branches come off from the foundations or secondary or subsidiary matters come off from the main segment or foundation of what you might be discussing and then the sheikh mentions here he says and he says all of the deen uh, revolves around these three foundations that we uh, that we'll discuss and the sheikh is going to explain to us so that's uh, very important to note then because all these three matters that, that we mentioned at the start up here as you can see where the cursor is the three foundations these revolve around all of the deen so we've got to know them so then the sheikh continues and he says qawluhu ma'rifatul abdi rabbahu Okay, so what we'll do is, I won't bore you with this. This is uh, Arabic grammar. It's going, it's going to be hard to explain in English. Um, so we'll just go past this section. But the Sheikh mentions, he says his speech, uh, knowing your Lord. And then the Sheikh mentions um, uh, some Arabic grammar that's going to be quite difficult to explain in English. It is quite difficult, to be honest, to explain in English. Uh, you'll only ever really understand that once you learn Arabic or if you already know Arabic. Um, so let's continue. So uh, the Sheikh mentions the three, the three fundamentals, the three fundamentals principles, which are uh, knowledge of your Lord, knowledge of the Deen of Islam, and knowledge of uh, the Nabi uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that, there's a lot of grammar there. So we'll skip that. There's no need to go through that. So the Sheikh says he says لماذا خص هذه الأصول الثلاثة? Why have these uh, particular uh, fundamental principles being specified or being mentioned and then he explains it here in this long paragraph he says because these we'll just stop there because it's a long paragraph so the first section of the paragraph the sheikh mentioned says why have these three fundamental principles specifically being specified and mentioned like this why um, and characterized in this manner he says because the foundations of the because they are the foundations of the deen of islam and because it, they are the affairs that which you will be asked about when you are buried uh, when you pass away and you are buried uh, into your grave and you're left there and you're obviously buried in your grave and you're in your grave in your burial <clears throat> and you'll be asked about these affairs in your grave so then the sheikh he says because the slave or the servant of allah if he has if he has been placed into his grave and the the dust and the mud above him has been leveled off meaning that the grave's been sealed and the affair has been completed there in terms of the burial um, and the people have left after, you know, they've left the, the area, they've left, they've gone back to their families, etc. 
and you're left there in your cover, in your grave alone, then two angels, as you all know, two angels will come to, to the grave and they will, um, you know, sit next to you and they'll, and they'll make you sit up and they will sit next to you and they'll make you sit upright. Uh, and the Sheikh says that this is the life of the Barzakh. So, Hayat and Barzakhiyat, and that's the life of the grave. And that's the best way to put it in English, the life of the grave. The, it's, the, um, it's the partition between the dunya and the akhirah is the life of the grave. And the Sheikh says that Allah and Allah knows best. So then he says this, that those two angels, they make, they'll make you sit upright, they sit next to you and they will say. So, so we'll continue from where we left off. He says, فَيَقُولَانِ لَهُ مَنْ رَبُّكَ وَمَا دِينُكَ وَمَنْ, نبي ومن نَبِيُّكَ فَالْمُؤْمِنُ يَقُولُ رَبِّيَ اللَّهُ وَدِينِيَ الْإِسْلَامُ وَمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّ وَمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ نَبِيٍّ فَيُقَالُ لَهُ كَيْفَ عَرَفْتَ يَقُولُ قَرَأْتَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ فَدَرَيْتُ وَعَرَفْتُ وَيُنَادِي مُنَادٍ أَنْ صَدَقَ أَنْ صَدَقَ عَبْدِي فَأَفْرِشُ مِنَ الْجُنَّةِ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَافْتَحُ لَهُ بَابًا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَيُوَسِّعُ لَهُ فِي قَبْرِهِ مَدَّ الْبَصْرِ فَيَأْتِيهِ مِنْ رِيحِ الْجَنَّةِ وَرُوحِهَا فَيَنْظُرُ إِلَى مَسْكَنِهِ فِي الْجَنَّةِ فَيَقُولُ يَا رَبِّ أَقِمِ السَّاعَةَ حَتَّى أَرْجِعَ حَتَّى أَرْجُعَ إِلَى أَهْلِي أَوْ أَرْجُعَ إِلَى أَهْلِي حَتَّى أَرْجُعَ إِلَى أَهْلِي وَمَالِي So then the Shaykh continues on the second part of the paragraph so where we left off from, where the angels will make the person who's been buried, they'll make him sit upright and they will ask him, the angels will ask him, those two angels will ask him, um, who is your Lord? What is your deen? What is your religion? And who is your Nabi? Who is your prophet? And so the Sheikh says, so the mu'min, the believer, he says that Allah is my Lord. And my deen is Al-Islam. And my prophet is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then it will be said to him, how do you know that? And then he will reply, he'll say, I read the book of Allah and I became aware and I learned. You know what I read? I learned from that and I had knowledge of it. So then a call, a voice will be heard and he will say, my slave, my servant, has told the truth. So make his grave um, wide and open up his grave. And uh, and uh, his grave will open up and will become spacious. And a door from the door uh, from from the doors of Jannah will be opened. The door a door will be opened, which he'll be able to smell the um, the uh, the uh, let's say the fragrance of Jannah. And his grave will be opened up for him as far as his eyes can see, he will see. So, uh, and he'll be able to smell the uh, the fragrance of Jannah. Uh, and he'll be able to see um, how his life will be in Jannah, you know, his place of residence, etc. And so he will say, when he sees this, he will say, he'll say, Ya Rabb, O oh my Lord, bring about the establishment of the final hour so that I can return to my people and, 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 and you know and what's awaiting me essentially so you can see uh, what's being said so, so obviously if the, if you, if the person uh, has done well in this dunya in this, in this life and has passed the test then that will be the outcome here in his grave as, 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 as the sheikh explained here for us so the sheikh continues and he says وَأَمَّ الْمُرْتَابَ الَّذِي عَاشَ عَلَى الريبة والشك وعدم اليقين وإن كان يدعي الإسلام إذا كان عنده شكوك وعنده ريب في دين الله أو ريب في دين الله كالمنافق فإنه يتلجلج فإذا قالوا له من ربك يقول لا أدري وإذا قالوا ما دينك يقول لا أدري وإذا قيل من نبيك يقول لا أدري ها ها لا أدري سمعت الناس يقولون شيئا فقلته. so 
This paragraph, the Shaykh explains, was, so this paragraph is in contrast to the previous one. So then the Shaykh says, as for the one who is doubtful and, you know, not certain in his knowledge and lived a life of upon um, doubt and, and like this and with, uh, with uncertainty, even if that person claims that he is a follower of Islam, and, and and he was upon um, doubts or doubtful matters about the deen. Uh, for example, he gives an example, the Sheikh gives an example, for example, like a, a, a munafiq, a hypocrite. And so he's, you know, uh, for for him, then he will be asked, so he'll be asked the same questions. He'll, he'll be asked, who's your Lord? And he'll say, I don't know, in his grave. He'll be asked, who's your Lord? And he will say, I don't know. He will be asked, what is your deen? Or what is your religion? And he will say, I don't know. And then finally, he will be asked the third question. Who is your prophet? And he will say, I don't know. And then he'll make a sound like ha ha, like in confusion or in uh, being startled. And he'll say, uh, I don't know. I heard people saying a thing. So I said what they said. And so the Shaykh continues and he says, يَعْنِي أَنَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا يَقُولُ مَا يَقُولُهُ النَّاسِ مِنْ غَيْرِ إِيمَانٍ وَلِيَادِ بِاللَّهِ هذا المنافق الذي أظهر الإسلام أظهر الإسلام وهو لا يعتقده في قلبه وإنما أظهره من أجل مصالحه الدنيوية فيقول في الدنيا ربي الله وهو غير مؤمن بها قلبه منكر والياد بالله يقول ديني الإسلام وهو لا يؤمن بالإسلام قلبه منكر يقول نبي يقول نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو لا يؤمن برسالة محمد في قلبه إنما يقول بلسانه فقط هذا هو المنافق فيقال له لا دريت ولا تليت فيضرب بمرزبة من حديد يصيح منها صيحة لو سمعه الثقلان لسائق يسمعها كل شيء إلا الإنسان لو سمعه لسائق أي لمات من الهول ويضيق عليه في قبره حتى تختلف أضلاعه ويفتح له باب إلى النار فيأتيه من سمومها وحرها فيقول يا رب لا تقم الساعة هذه عيشته وحالته في القبر والعياذ بالله لأنه ما أجاب بالجواب السديد So that's a long paragraph but uh, it's following on from the previous uh, paragraph that we uh, complete the translation of So the Sheikh says meaning that in the dunya this person in the dunya he, he said what other people said so if somebody said something he just follow what they were saying um with that without iman without firm belief and and also and and so this person was a hypocrite in this example a hypocrite which he uh made apparent that he was that he, he was upon islam however he never believed it within his heart what uh, and indeed or rather he he uh, portrayed Islam uh, visually and on the outside uh, for the reason of um, worldly affairs, you know, to, to gain benefit of the worldly affairs, wherever that might be, whether it's money or position or status or, or, or whatever it is from the affairs of the dunya or the benefits of the dunya for his own worldly gain. And he he says... And he'll say in the dunya, and yeah, so the Sheikh says, and, and what he'll say in the dunya is, he'll say, my Lord is Allah. And he doesn't actually believe it in his heart, even though he says it. And he'll, and his heart is disavowing that. And then he'll say, my deen is the deen of Islam. However, he doesn't believe it, and his heart is disavowing that as well. But that's inside which he's hiding. And he'll say, my prophet is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And likewise, he won't really believe it in his heart. He's just saying it on his tongue. Uh, and, his, and his heart is rejecting it. And, all, and the Sheikh says, all he's saying, 
this particular person, this example, all he's saying is just on his tongue. That's it. And and the Shaykh says, and this munafiq, this hypocrite, it will be said to him, you don't know, you don't know. And he will be hit by a metal rod or an iron rod. He'll be hit with the iron rod. And he'll be hit to the extent that everything else except uh, the insan can hear it. So the animals and everything else will hear it. And the Sheikh says, if we were given the ability to hear the, this person's screams when he's struck with his iron rod, it, it would it would kill us. The, the, the screams would be to such an extent, it would bring about death. That's how bad it is. And that's, and, and that's, as we can imagine, we can just try and imagine that, um, it'd be such an extent that, that it would cause death if we heard it. And so then what happens to this person then is, um, what will happen to this person in his grave? The grave will constrict upon him. It'll become narrow. It'll constrict upon him up until his ribs, you know, cross over, you know, in that situation and, uh, a door uh, from the uh, a door from hell will be opened, and and he will see and he will feel the heat of it. He'll feel the heat of it, and he'll be able to see when the doors open. And he will say, when he realizes the situation he's in, he will say, "Ya Rab, O oh Lord, don't bring about the establishment of the hour." So the opposite to the other person, to, to the opposite, to, to uh, is the opposite. To the other person who actually passed the test, who did well as a Muslim, died upon Islam, died upon Tawheed, passed the test. This person's the opposite, and and you'll see he will say the opposite as well. Everything's opposite. He'll say he will say, "Ya Rab, don't uh, bring about the establishment of the hour because he knows what's waiting for him and what's to come." And this is the life of a person uh, in the uh, in, 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 and the Sheikh says this is the life. Of a person in the grave, in this particular person, obviously we've discussed the other type of person and the situations. And the reason why he's like this is because he didn't answer the questions correctly. <clears throat> so then we continue. So then there's excerpt from the original text. فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكْ مَنْ رَبُّكْ فَقُلْ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ أَلَّذِي رَبَّانِي وَرَبَّ جَمِيعَ الْعَالَمِينَ so then we move on to the next part and that is where the shaykh says if it is said to you who is your lord then say or reply an answer with my lord is allah who who um uh, who is my lord and who has, has taken care of me or has uh, you know has nurtured me and is the lord of all of mankind and that ex and all that which exists so the Shaykh continues and says, وَلِذَلِكَ يُنَادِي مُنَادٍ أَنْ كَذَبَ عَبْدِي فَأَفْرِشُوهُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَفْتَهُ لَهُ بَابًا مِنَ النَّارِ وَلِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ فَإِذَا كَانَتْ هَذِي الْمَسَائِلِ بِهَذِي الْأَهْمِيَّةِ وَجَبَ عَلَيْنَا أَنْ نَتَعَلَّمَهَا وَأَنْ نَأْتَقِدَهَا وَلَا يَكْفِي التَّعَلُّمُ فَقَتْ بَلْ نَتَعَلَّمَهَا so they're just finishing off the paragraph from earlier on. That as as we can see, the Sheikh says, as you can see, um the two different types of people, you know, the good ending and the bad ending, you know, in the grave or the situation, the good situation and and, and, and the bad situation in the grave. And so as you can see the uh, you know how important it is to learn these uh, these three affairs that the Sheikh is discussing. Uh, and therefore, that is why it's um, uh, obligatory to learn to save us, to save ourselves from uh, a bad outcome. Um, and the Shaykh continues then, and uh, he mentions uh, an ayah here. So let's go through that. يقول الله تعالى يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول ثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويضل الله الظالمين وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ So that's from Surah Ibrahim, verse 27. And if we just pull up the translation of that, and you brothers can have a look at the translation yourselves as well. 
if we read out the translation of that ayah, we'll, we'll understand what's being said as well. It'll further cement our understanding. Allah will keep firm those who believe with the word that stands firm in this world, i.e. they will keep on worshipping Allah alone and none else. And in the hereafter, and Allah will cause to go astray those who are zalimun, polytheists and wrongdoers, etc. And Allah does what he wills. That's fairly clear to us. And then the shaykh continues, so he begins a new paragraph and he says, فَهَذِهِ الْأُصُولُ الثَّلَاثَةُ لَهَا أَهَمِّيَّةٌ عَظِيمَةٌ وَلِهَذَا رَكَّزَ عَلَيْهَا الشَّيْخِ فِي هَذِهِ الرِّسَالَةِ وَوَضَّحَهَا مِنْ أَجْلِ أَنْ نَدْرُسَهَا وَنَتْمَعَنَّ فِيهَا وَنَأْتَقِدَهَا وَنَعْمَلْ بِهَا لَوَ اللَّهَ أَنْ يُثَبِّتَنَ وَإِيَّاكُمْ بِالْقَوْلِ ثَابِتْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ So then the shaykh says, he says, so therefore these uh, three principles, uh, they are, they're of great importance. And this is why the shaykh himself uh, wrote this uh, treatise or this book and clarified what they are in order for us to learn them and you know and to believe in them and to have, and to be upon a firm creed and the correct creed and belief and act by them as well so not just knowing them uh, and a lot of us we know things but we might not necessarily act upon them and so when it comes to the religion it's not just about reading or memorizing something and understanding it that's good that's brilliant but the next part is to act upon it, and that's why the Quran was sent down. It was to to learn, to memorize, to learn, to act upon it, right, and put into practice. And so the Sheikh mentions that to us here in this paragraph, and he says, and he and, and he makes a dua, and he says that he makes a dua to Allah for all of us, that Allah makes us firm upon the Deen of Allah with firm speech. An action in this in this life of the dunya and in the hereafter. And so, jazakallah khairan for that for the dua. And um, then he continues. So he says, "Lama bayna shaykhu rahimahullahu al-usul al-thalatha mujmala tan arada an yubaynaha mufassala tan wahid wahidan wahidan bi adilatiha min al-kitab wa sunnati." ومن آيات الله في القون ومن الأدلة الأقلية وهكذا يجب أن تبنى تبنى الأقيد الأقائد على أدلة الكتاب والسنة وعلى النظر في آيات الله الكونية من أجل أن ترسخ أن ترخص وتثبت في القلب وتزول جميع الشبه شبه. so um the sheikh mentions here so so when he says so when the sheikh uh, may Allah have mercy upon him mentioned uh, mentioned the usul of thalatha, the three fundamental principles, um, and he originally initially mentioned them um, in a general manner, in a general way, uh, and and he want and he wanted that also to clarify it uh, in a more uh, detailed fashion, step by step, one by one, and taking steps with evidences. From the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and also with the signs and evidences in the universe that we live in, you know, so like the signs, you know, the the, the tangible things we can see around us, and also uh, uh, with with our intellect as well. But in the order of of this, with the Quran, the Sunnah, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the 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 universe around us, you know, all the signs and and you know, using your intellect upon the correct way, of course, based on evidence and sound uh, evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. And the Sheikh says, he says, and like this, it's obligatory. Uh, it's it's it's, an oblig it's obligatory that uh, uh, your uh, that uh, your aqida or, or our aqida, our our creed, is built upon evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam and also bearing in mind the uh, the signs around us in our universe as well uh, in order for us to have deep-rooted and, and, and firm uh, 
uh, knowledge and, and have that creed that we have from the knowledge and from the examples that it makes our creed deep rooted and it's firm right so the foundation is firm so then she continues and says wa amma al aqaid al mabniya ala shubuhat wa ala shukuki wa ala aqwal an nas wa at taqlid al a'ma fa inha aqaid zaila la tusabbat wa hiya urda wa hiya urda wa hiya urda lil naqdi wa urda lil abtal so then the Sheikh mentions here, he goes, as for, he says, as for the, the, um, the beliefs that people have that are built upon, um, that are built upon, uh, doubts, then for, uh, and, 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 and the speech of people, just the sayings of people, and upon blind following, for indeed, these types of creeds that are built upon these uh, uh, in this way, it won't last. It's shaky. It's not deep rooted and firm, and and it has no basis in reality, and it, it will it, it it's not it won't consolidate, and it's liable, and it's liable to that, be, and it's liable to uh, contradictions and nullification as well. You know, you may end up believing something in the wrong way, and then later on down the line, you end up contradicting and or it becomes contradicted because of doubts and other things, and it becomes nullified in the end, and um, because it's not based on firm knowledge and not taken from the correct sources, as the scholars say, the sources of the Deen of Islam are the Quran, the Sun, the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, these are the two, especially when when it comes to aqida and creed. This is where it's taken from. And then uh, the Sheikh continues and he says, "فلا فلا تثبت العقيدة ولا سائر الأحكام الشرعية إلا بأدلة الكتاب وسنة وبالأدلة الأقلية المسلمة." ولهذا أكثر الشيء ولهذا أكثر الشيخ رحمه الله من سياق الأدلة على هذه الأصول الثلاثة فلا يمر أصل منها إلا وقد دعمه بالأدلة والبراهين اليقينية التي تطرد الشكوك تطرد الشكوك والهوى وترسخ لقيدة في القلب. So the Sheikh says, so he says that the قيدة it won't be confirmed and the rest of the Parts of the deen, for example, you know the uh, the laws the, of the, the, the Sharia uh, the, and, and the laws associated with the deen, uh, uh, they won't they won't they won't be firm. They won't be firm if you are if you follow and take knowledge from the wrong sources, and you're filled with doubts and contradictions, uh, as, as mentioned in the previous paragraph. And the Sheikh says. Um, and, and if you don't take knowledge from the correct sources as mentioned. And so that's why he says, so for, for this reason, that's why the original author, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, uh, focused on and increased in, in, in the evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah uh, in mentioning these al uh, al Salatha and the three fundamental principles. And that we won't come across a foundation except that he uh, fortified it and strengthened strengthened the points that he's made from uh, with the evidences f uh, and uh, 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 from the evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah up until the point that any doubts and desires are repelled and pushed away because the matter has been clarified clearly and so the the uh, the belief of the person is deep rooted within his heart and firm and sound. And then the Sheikh continues and he says, "Allah um, rahimahullah, fa idha qila lak, ay su'ilta man rabbuk, wa hada su'alum wa waridun satusalu anhu fi dunya wal akhira, falabudda anta falabudda anta'rifa rabbak azza wa jal." 
وأن تجيب بجواب بجواب صحيح مبني على اليقين والبرهان فقل ربي الله هذا هو الجواب الذي رباني ورب ورب جميع العالمين وبنعمي هذا استدلال عقلي هذا استدلال عقلي so then the sheikh says and he says and 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 he said may allah mercy upon him if it is said to you i e you are asked who is your lord he says and and he says this question um uh, as we know you will be asked about you'll be asked about it you'll be asked about you you asked about this in the dunya but you'll also be asked about this in the akhirah so therefore it's incumbent then it's incumbent and appropriate that you know who your lord is azza wa jal and that you answer with an answer that is correct built upon certainty or based upon certainty and evidences so say my lord is allah and this is the right answer my lord is allah who who is my lord and the lord of all that exists and uh, and so and who takes care of me you know who provides for me you know etc all the things we discussed in previous lessons and this is the evidence that 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 the intellect easily accepts and it's in the natural disposition as well why because it's based on the quran and the sunnah so then the sheikh says for rabbu jalla wa ala هو الذي يربي جميع جميع عباده بنعمه ويغذيهم برزقه يخلقهم بعد ان لم يكونوا شيئا مذكورا في بطون امهاتهم خلقا من بعد خلق في ظلمات ثلاث فيوصل اليهم الرزق حتى في بطون امهاتهم ولذلك ينمو جسم الجنين في بطن امه ويكبر لأنه يصل إليه الرزق من الله سبحانه وتعالى ويصل إليه الغذاء. so um, the sheikh mentions here and so the Lord Jalla Wala he is who you know takes care of us who nurtures us who 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 helps us grow and develop and also for for the rest of the alamin everything that exists Allah is the Lord of everything. He takes care of them. He provides food for them. Provides risk for them. You know, uh, nutrients, everything, and create created them, and created all of us. For example, just to make easy, created all of us, and we were nothing. We were nothing. We didn't even exist. Did not exist, and created from nothing. Allah created us. And then the Sheikh gives an example of uh, a fetus in 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 the mother's womb. You know. before there was nothing and then there's this fetus in the in the womb of the mother and allah provides it with its provisions right and um, and hel- and allah develops this uh, fetus yeah and develops the body of this fetus through the stages as we all know through those nine months eight nine months 10 months um Uh, of the of the pregnancy the fetus is being developed and the baby and then at, at a certain point the uh, uh the spirit or the soul is blown into into the body of the fetus and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides and help and develops and takes care of his creation so then the sheikh continues and he says thumma tunfakhu fihi ar-ruh فيتحرك ويحيا باذن الله هذه تربيه هذه تربيه في البطن ثم اذا خرج فان الله سبحانه يربيه بنعمه بالصحه والعافيه ويدر عليه لبن امه فيتغذى الى ان ياكل الطعام ويستغني عن الحليب ثم ينمو شيئا فشيئا عقله وسمعه وبصره ينمو شيئا فشيئا حتى يبلغ الحلم الحلم ثم ينمو وينمو حتى يبلغ الشدة ويبلغ 40 سنة ويكون في غاية القوة 
so then the Sheikh says, we just mentioned, I mentioned that briefly, but we'll just go through this as well. Um, the Sheikh mentions that then, at a certain point when the fetus is uh, within the womb, uh, the soul is blown into and uh, into the fetus and is given life and then it starts moving, starts moving by the permission of Allah. And then he further develops and develops and develops up until he comes out and he comes into the world. And then he says, indeed, Allah subhanahu uh, then develops him uh, by his uh, grace and by his uh, blessings uh, with and, 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 and gives him um, uh, strength and fortitude and gives him health and and uh, uh, continues to provide for him, for example, through the uh, uh, the milk of the mother. And then he uh, then the, the, the baby uh, receives uh, nutrients. And then up until the point when uh, he's able to eat and starts eating and he's not re he's not requiring uh, milk or in need of milk, then he eats and so he develops. So then the Sheikh says uh, the, 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 the baby develops bit by bit, step by step. Then his, uh, his, his body further develops, his intelligence develops, his brain develops, his ears develop, his eyes sight, his develops. Uh, and uh, step by step, all of these parts of the body, they develop up until he reaches uh, puberty, for example. Then he develops further and further, uh, or up until he uh, uh, is able to uh, understand and differentiate uh, uh, from things, uh, from different things, be able to differentiate what's what and what's right, what's wrong, etc. And then up until the point where uh, the person, you know, reaches puberty and reaches the age of 40, for example. And and the and the person is in, uh, in 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 strength from strength to strength, and is in good health generally speaking. Yeah. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, فَمَنِ في جسمه فيصل إلى إلى كل خلية وإدلة وإلى عدلة وإلى كل وإلى كل مكان في جسمه من الذي يشهي إليه الطعام والشراب من الذي يصرف ويخرج منه ضرر من من الذي يفعل هذا ويربي هذا الإنسان أليس هو الله سبحانه وتعالى هذا هو الرب سبحانه وتعالى الذي يربي هو الذي رباني وربي جميع العالمين بنعمته. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, so, uh, so then you know who is it that provides the nutrients that that keeps people keeps you strong, that keeps this particular person strong, that keeps a person in health, that provides the nutrients, um, uh, food, and the person eats, and the energy, and all this goes to every single part of the body, every cell, muscle, etc. And and who is it? The Sheikh says, is it not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And of course, that's a rhetorical question because the answer is yes. Is it not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He is the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala who, who um, uh, nurtures and develops everyone, right? All of his creation and takes care of his creation. He is the one who developed me and takes care of me and takes care of all of the alameen, all of the people and all of the creation, everything that exists by his blessing. So then we're on the last page. We'll finish here, inshallah. Then the Shaykh continues. He says, كُلُّ مَا عَلَى وَجْهِ الْأَرْضِ مِنُ الْعَوَالِمِ الْآدِمِيَّةِ وَالْحَيَوَانِيَّةِ وَعَالِمِ الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ مِنْ من أكبر مخلوق إلى أصغر مخلوق في البر والبحر كلها تتغذى بنعمه ورزقه قال تعالى أمن هذا الذي يرزقكم إن أمسك رزقه وقال وما من دابة في الأرض إلا على الله رزقها ويألم مستقرها ومستودعها وقال وَكَأَيِّمْ مِنْ دَابَّةٍ لَا تَحْمِلُ رِزْقَهَا اللَّهُ يَرْزُقُهَا وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ هذا هو الرب سبحانه ذلكم الله ربكم فاعبدوا أما غير الله جل وعلا فلا يملك من ذلك شيئا لا الأسنام ولا غيرها لا أحد يملك من الرزق شيئا 
و ان ما هو مرزوق مخلوق مثلك so then the sheikh says and so he mentions here continues from where we left uh, where he left off and he says so from all of the creation from mankind to the animals and all like this on the on the land and in the sea from uh, the largest of the creatures and the creation to the smallest of the creation he says that are in that are on the land and that are in the sea all of it all of the creation receives its its provisions by the blessing of allah receives its provisions and its nutrients and then we mention uh, the sheikh mentioned a few ayahs so let's go through them just to consolidate what we were saying so the first ayah is from surah al-mulk so we will read that who is who is he that can provide for you if he should withhold his provision nay but they continue to be in pride and they flee from the truth next ayah from surah al-hud Surah to Hud. Let's read the whole ayah from here. And no moving living creature is there on earth, but its provision is due from Allah, and He knows its dwelling place and its deposit in the uterus, grave, etc. All is in a clear book, Allah al Mahfud, the book of decrees with Allah. The next ayah is from Surah to Lankabut. So let's go there. Read the whole ayah. And so many. A moving living creature there is that carries not its own provision. Allah provides for it and for you, and He is the All Hearer, the All Knower. And the next ayah is from Surah to Yunus. Surah to Yunus. Let's go to Yunus. Surah to Yunus. We'll read the whole ayah from start to finish. Surely your Lord is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days and then rose over the throne in a manner that suits His Majesty, disposing the affair of all things. No intercessor can plead with him except after his leave. That is Allah your Lord. So worship him alone. Then will you not remember? So that's the whole ayah. So we can see. And then the Sheikh mentions that there isn't anything else on this planet and this universe from the creation except that it's created, except that it can only uh, uh, be given provision. It can't do anything for itself. And Allah is the one who provides the provision, who creates and and deal, uh, takes care of the affairs and the creation, they are not really capable of anything. They rely on Allah. Their sole reliance is upon Allah. And and the Shaykh reminds us and he says, and all we are are creatures that are provided for and we're created. And, and, and just so we distinguish that Allah is the one who provides so we'll uh, we'll stop there because then this goes on to the it goes further on here to the next part of the of what we're discussing what the sheikh's discussing. So we'll stop here today, inshallah, and we'll continue. Uh, we'll continue the lesson from where we leave, uh, left off here, inshallah, next week eight fifteen. Bi idhn lahi taala. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tuwilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.